Roll 3d6s for me. Oh, and I got a one, a one, and a two. You read Here, let me roll again. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Me at Vegas? <laughs> Hold on, give, give me the dice back. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to a lovely Monday, a bored AF day, if you will. We have a, a RPG master with us oh. today well. who will be the games master uh, for today's game, if that's what you call it. Uh, we're joined by Sage Ryan. Uh, I'm very excited. We're running a game called Ah Dang, Mothman Won't Move Out. And he said it was just for the weekend. So Mothman is a cryptid. Is that what they call him? Basically like a mythological creature sort of thing. Well, what's exciting about the scenario of this RPG is we're actually going to roll for it live, which also means I got to do absolutely no pre-planning. So everything that you're watching today is entirely improvised. Hooray! Uh, the overall tone, all that we know about it is that you all live together and that Mothman is currently crashing with you. And he said he just needed a place to stay for like the weekend. And now it's been a little bit. And instead of a typical TTRPG where your goals are slaying dragons and accomplishing great feats of heroism, uh, you're really just trying to get Mothman off your couch and get your place back. Uh, everyone's just kind of going to wing it. And sometimes you roll to see if you wing it well. Let's start by introducing all of your characters. My character's name is Dominique. I'm the brawn in this household. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I believe in gun control, but also I brought these guns to the show today. Um, she has cat-like reflexes. So uh, Dominique, that's, that's her, that's gonna be me. Hi, good morning. Uh, peace and love out to everyone. My name is Storm Cloud. Uh, my real name, my human, my non-spiritual force name is Daniel. Uh, you may call me however you desire. You can call me Stormcloud. You can call me Storm, Stormy. You want to combine my my spiritual name and my real name? You can call me Stormy Daniel. I don't care. Uh, hello, what up, everybody? My name's Kyle G. I'm really, I'm really kind of like an, an entrepreneur. I grow weed in my closet which I then sell, and I farm Bitcoin. Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Robbie. Uh, I'm, I'm a junker by day and by night, depending on when I actually get to sleep. Uh, I like to go to scrapyards, pick out things that other people throw away foolishly, because, I mean, I tell you what, if you, if you got a pane of glass that is broken, you can melt that down, make it into an ornament for your grandma, maybe think about someone else for a minute there um does not pay well um but i'm happy what is a persistent problem that you've had with your home or your living situation that was not caused by mothman coming to stay from the attic there is a fireman pole kind of situation but i land somewhere different every time and i don't know how and sometimes it's the bathroom so i'm just gonna roll a d6 uh Mothman has unfortunately been here for months. Ugh. Oh man. We weren't even, I wasn't even aware for a while. Oh. Yeah. He said it was just for the weekend, but it has been months at this point. Uh, and he's here because, and this is completely random, he put his life savings into Bitcoin. So he can't get back on his feet. And I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with Kyle. I'm not saying it does. I'm saying it's possible that some some bad advice has come down. Hey. <laughs> it's a Monday morning. It's about 8 a.m. Well, the three of you that are in the house are disturbed from your activities and awoken by loud <laughs> sobbing from the first floor of your home. I'm just, I'm going to hustle on in there and start talking to my boy, Mothman. He cannot hear you approaching over his own feverish crying. I go back to the kitchen, grab two Capri Suns. Uh, go ahead and handle the straw for me. 
be sure his fingies are too big to do it on his own. So I have what are known as Legos. I'm going to use them to build a whole uh, lever situation, a crank lever. This is this is Legos like the tech. Oh, you're talking about like connects. You're talking about like Lego Technic. It's got the oh, gears. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. I don't right. know if it's you've seen the, the like the yeah, Mario of TV that you can crank. Yeah. it. Yes, of course. Yeah, I made we a all watch that. We all watch. We all watch that together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I made a bong <laughs> out of that. Called it bong bong jun ho that's that's my favorite one done it smoked my parasite weed with it roll three d6s for me because i'm gonna say you're using your incredible engineering skills to apply to this and let's see how well you can get a capri sun in mothman's mouth (laughs) i rolled a 12. without question you're able to to pry the hands open just enough to to sneak the straw into his mouth and it does kind of shake him up and when he looks up at you he's a a grayish figure with glowing red eyes that you're very Mm. familiar with Mm. uh that even sitting still is taller than you just by his upper half on your couch oh god man did i wake you god i'm sorry that's okay guy because it's okay to not be okay and that Pacific Cooler, that's for you. Drink up. He takes the Pacific Cooler and he just consumes the entire <laughs> beverage packet. And he's like, that helps a lot. I just, yeah, I'm feeling really lost. And, you know, I know, I know that I said I would be out, but like, you know, you don't mind if it's just a, if it's just a little while. Dude. It, it has become a, a topic of conversation. Um, we love Mothman. Everybody loves Mothman. But oh, I thank love cake. you. I knew you'd understand. And if I if I ate cake hand over fist each day, morning to night, without stopping or breathing, I'd be a very sick, very obese man. Well, I'm saying up his right hand that's just full of a cake that you had in the fridge that was from somebody's special occasion, and he's just got like a handful of cake in it. Thank you for understanding. And he just shoves a handful. All right, team. Uh, we need a house meeting, Mothman. We are going to get you back on your feet. We're going to find you a source of income. And we're gonna find you a girlfriend. Bitcoin's been crazy this week. Please don't, don't talk about God. D- I don't want to. I and he's like standing up, and he knocks over the pole holding the shower curtain up, and he's like, "Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. When it came to bust, but Bitcoin, I trusted you. I lost the house. I lost my car. I lost my girlfriend. I lost my parents' ashes." Yeah, he well, that's what happens when you buy switch. into an unregulated currency, bro. I thought it would work for me. Everyone kept saying cryptocurrency. It's great. They're saying cryptocurrency. What? You buy encrypted I, currency? I, I, I Googled it. What if we all teach you our jobs? In the root spot? I'm, what if we all teach you our jobs? I'll teach you how to be a junker. They'll be, oh, no, by all means, have the, what's the better thing? Tell me the better well, thing. I'm just, I'm just saying because, Mothman, you've talked endlessly, and we've all heard it. You've talked endlessly about how you want to write a pilot of the, called the Mothman Prophecies. I once gave a massage to Drew Barrymore. She was very kind. Wow. And uh, I could probably call Drew Barrymore and see if she would be willing to read your script or send it or pass it along to someone. I don't know. I, I kind of liked the idea of everybody teaching me what, what they do. It could be like a ride along. I could come with you to your job and I could learn how well, to do it oh, and see if anyone is willing like to. like that was the better idea. What I don't know. It's what like, it, no, no. It's like, like a very original idea, Mothman. Hey, guys, like, guys, 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 hold on. I just got some post weed clarity. What if we all teach Mothman what we all do? Brilliant. Smart. Welcome to okay. the meeting, okay. Kyle. You have been selected, Stormcloud, to help Mothman gather his story and tell it uh that will be your responsibility to to help him figure out and the rest of you are going to have to take him along like take your child to work day uh and and try and figure out something that he could be helpful with because that's all he really wants is is to be useful to find himself all right everybody to the fire pole okay. from the attic Okay, uh, yeah, so he'll he'll follow you up to the attic. All right, standard Harry Potter rules. You throw just a, a handful of pocket sand into it, and you just have to say, uh, uh, junkyard, don't sneeze. Don't do a, don't do a Diagon Alley situation. Uh, Mothman, of course, takes your hand and puts one other on the pole and goes, uh, j- junkyard. I throw the pocket sand with my other hand. We both hop in. Hopefully everyone else is behind us, but... Can I just astral project there, or do I need to go there? Uh, yeah, you can astral project there, sure. I don't go anywhere without my um, emotional support plant, Marjorie. So I slide down the banister mm-hmm. like a really cool dude. Grab Marjorie, 
And then I run back up and jump on that pole. And jump on that pole. Okay, uh, what do you say as you're, as you're jumping onto the pole? <laughs> That's what you say? Are you sure? Yeah. It's like Diagon Alley. You don't love where you land in the junkyard. Yeah. The word that Robbie had said that everyone oh. should say when transporting was junkyard, but you said hey. and you have landed in, of course, Oh, no. I don't know why somebody put a, a giant pile of feces in a junkyard. What is this, Jurassic Park? That's me. So you just me. say junkyard and throw a pile of down the pole? No, I work in the junkyard, and naturally, sometimes the coffee's gonna kick in before I get home. To be fair, I have seen Robbie stick his entire ass in the portal, and then just say things. That was a secret! Shit. And you said you wouldn't tell anyone. <laughs> you promised! Okay, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm going to take off all my clothes. Because mm -hmm. they're Smart. covered in feces. Yeah. yeah. Smart. Your roommate's feces, as you've discovered. Yeah. Mothman, uh, I want you to wiggle around your fingers until I say stop, and we're going to walk in that direction and hit a thing. Okay, he starts wiggling. Stop. All right, he's pointing towards a mid-size mountain of garbage with um, a couple shiny pieces of silver up at the top of it. Mothman, you've got the instinct. Let's fly faster than we've ever flown before. Not really, because I can't fly. He flies. Oh, damn it. All right. <laughs> So he lands down kind of gloriously in almost a superhero pose on the top of this trash mound and his, his large wings sprawling and he, and he lands down on top of it and looks back up the at click, you. The click, click, click. And of course, I mean, you're taking some good, good mop man picks. He uh, picks up a pile of junk and he comes yeah. back to you. And in it, there's like a car door handle, Amazing. a broken antenna, Amazing. and um, like some kind of like scrap sheet metal. Uh, but also in it is a small kitten that's dirty and a little emaciated and has like a little slit in its ear. And he's like, uh. So this car handle. $300. This scrap metal, $6,000. That's pure uh, tungsten. Tungsten is very rare and difficult to find. That's easy. You'll get, you'll know how to spot that. But that kitten, Very high priceless. melting point. Very high melting point. You can use it in cell phones. It's it's very important to have. Um, but the kitten, don't even talk about its melting point because you're going to take care of that thing forever. That's that's destiny right there. That's called a purpose. So, so I can keep it? You legally have to, I believe. And he picks up the tiny kitten and he sets it on his, his big shoulder with still like, oh, like a really, really faint. Oh. I know you haven't been feeling very confident in yourself lately, but I want you to take a look at these. And I pull out the digital camera. No editing, no nothing. That's just you. No cloak on. Not hiding yourself. Wow. Letting the world see it. What do you think? I, I look, I look kind of good. Uh, take that kind of right out of there. And he like Good. stands up a little straighter. Like it clearly just put a little pep in his step with the yeah. kitten on his shoulder. I mean, anybody would be lucky to have you, Mothman. Anybody. Mothman exchanges a little bit of like a prolonged eye contact with Dominique. The kitten also stares. Meow. With a face like that and a wagon like that, Mothman, you could get anyone you'd like. I've never been so objectified in my life. I or anything. anything. Wow. That's true. Any you, Bigfoot? Mothman, your back end is built like a Pixar mom. You could get Bigfoot easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? I. <laughs> you say. You, big, Bigfoot? I mean. Yeah, oh, yes. I, I, think I've, I think I've learned my junkyard lesson. If you want something, just take it and go out the back door. That well, yeah, for objects, yes. Uh, Thank you. Otherwise, you need Bye. to communicate with people. Okay. On to the pole, heading home. So <laughs> you're back in the attic, Mothman, mm. with a palpable <laughs> level of confidence and cake, is just ready for the next adventure. Yeah, I think it's time for Mothman and I to have a little bit of private time in my basement. Jim, for Mothman's she means sake. She kissing. <laughs> Stop. I'm just, I'm I just saying. want Mossman's blushing. I just, I, 
I would never. I'm a professional. Right. So sure. Mothman follows you down to the basement and he's just kind of looking around at all of your various like equipment. Why don't you give me a little idea of, of what what scenario you've created here? And I'd like to remind you that you created it. <laughs> I'd like to remind you that this is all your fault. I'd like to remind you that you put yourself and the rest of us in this position. It was. We're in my basement gym. Um, everything is covered in black leather. The pommel horse is covered in black leather. The vault table is covered in black leather. Okay, not the bars because we don't want to do that because we do need the ability to actually swing across the bar, go from the low bar to the high bar. The beam is covered in black leather as well. I feel like, and no judgment, but I feel like Dominique, and her name kind of suggests uh -huh. it. Yeah. She says Dominate she's a gymnast, it. but I but I kind of think she stomps on balls for a living. I just I think it's very possible. <laughs> I am no a judgment. physicist. I'm a physicist. I thought the whips I, and I thought the whips and chains were that like MMA thing that people do. I thought so mm -hmm. too. Chat has pointed out that she's an accountant. I <laughs> I would like you to roll um three D sixes, because we're gonna utilize your cat like reflexes here. Uh, don't worry about what you're rolling for. It's fine. 15. 15! The rest of you in the house uh, can hear the sounds of smashing into the walls uh, as if there is potentially a fist fight going on in your basement. Uh, but you're familiar with the sound as your roommate is, of course, an accountant and this is, uh, <laughs> this is her job. The door swings open. Oh, buddy! <laughs> that was... Talk about a workout, I mean, the calories, I go, wow, wow, the calories, oh, the calories I burn, I mean, put those calories in a fire, <laughs> send them up, it's a fireworks in here, I'm just saying, guys, I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> we got a, uh, we got another champion in the making. And Mothman kind of emerges behind her, but both looking the most calm, he's ever looked and also a little scarred like his eyes are just like somehow even bigger and like a deeper shade of red as if he is just somewhere else and he has just seen something uh he will never be able to explain <laughs> so i slide i slide down the banister really cool like with my butterfly knife mothman says well grab um eight vape pens Stick them all into his Mothman's proboscis. You gotta chill out, man. He, without really knowing what is happening, just kind of breathes in and then coughs and all of them, all of the eight, was it? Vape mm. pens fall out of his mouth at the same time. And he starts flapping his wings in the oh, house. God. Oh no. Oh, and no. He, he's got Mothman <laughs> zoomies now. Uh, and it, it's just affecting a moth differently. And he starts flying around the, cats the house. Are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I smash a button on the wall because I've been prepared for the situation. Uh -huh. And out of all of our leftover Ralph's bags and fishing twine, I've made several like, you know, cat capturing devices <laughs> that are big like parachutes jutting out the house. You're trying to capture him in your uh, Ralph's bag net of sorts, kind of, right? One of my dozen, yes, that are One of your dozen. Out. Yes, of course. So while he's zooming around the house, he manages to uh, kind of fly and tumble backwards and land headfirst into your plastic bag contraption. He's unconscious. That's all uh, you know. I think we should bring him to the couch. We could I say would like hell to give and him mouth him to mouth. I think he might need CPR. You just want to kiss his proboscis again. <laughs> I didn't do that before. We just did gymnastics in my basement. As someone who's explored okay, all the in-between. Sort of John C. Riley. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We were going to uh, do we're gymnastics. Just doing, uh, gymnastics, doing gymnastics in my basement. You're being my basement. Yeah. weird right yeah. now. I don't know. Is, uh, <laughs> I am going to take a vacuum tube, a leaf blower, and a uh, what is a defibrillator and a gun? And mix it all together and a gun. <laughs> but I'm gonna fill the gun with Pez. So I'm gonna use the first three things, sort of make a contraption around him to both start his heart and breathe air into him at uh -huh. the same time. And then the Pez is just for a little treat. Roll three D sixes. Sage, I'm not gonna lie to you. I got an eleven. So you, you you build this contraption, you fire a gun into his mouth that shoots Pez, and a large electric current flows mm -hmm. through his body and also through yours at the nice. same time. So Robbie, 
as the shock goes through your body. Yeah. <laughs> something about your body just feels a little heavier. And uh, Mothman looks at you in Robbie's body and starts screaming. Oh, God. We Freaky Friday, didn't we? <laughs> oh, Mothman, God. He stands straight up and looks a little more clear than ever, honestly. He postures up correctly and he goes, hey, guys. And he walks over and he starts kind of like tinkering with some of Robbie's... Um, little contraptions and goes well that was weird wasn't it anyways mothman you should go mothman i don't think anybody's really confused about what just happened here but i am very disappointed at what you well, just well i guess robbie's okay so i guess oh, we can get back no. to the task <laughs> oh no can't you hear that my accent is still what it whatever the hell it was before but robbie now you can fly oh <gasps> <gasps> exactly you knew it was me son of a i just, I'm just thought was, i'm just going along with this what are we excited at what are we surprised about i'm in mothman's body where do you think you are right now hold you on I hold on boy. you're not mothman oh yeah, my kidding. god i am doing some breath work uh -huh. and some intentioning and i'm going to bring their energies together and then move them back to their own bodies Roll 3d6s for me. Oh, and I got a one, a one, and a two. I think maybe these are, the Google dice are broken. You reach Here, let me roll back. again. No, uh, that's no, not how no, it no, works. no, no, no. <laughs> me at Vegas? <laughs> Hold on, give me, give me the dice back. No. <laughs> so, oh, man. you reach your hands out. <laughs> Do I die? You <laughs> and you channel all of your energy, okay? All of it, everything that you have in you, you set your intentions and you can, the, the other two of you in the room can see a, a kind of strange ethereal glow forming around Robbie, Stormcloud, and Mothman. And all three of you elevate out of your bodies and become this strange combined being mm. oh my God. with Mothman's fur and wings, <laughs> Robbie's very photogenic face. Thank you. And the body of Stormcloud still holding his hands out. <laughs> and you have become an amalgamation of the three of you now operating one body. This is just Dragon Ball Z. Dominique, you're seeing this too? Yes, I'm seeing it. Also, okay. can you please put like some basketball shorts on? Anything? Those are the only clothes I had. I sold the rest for more Bitcoin. I'm going to separate their spirits with the force of my feminine energy and hmm. the, the post-coital energy that still writhes through my body. Hmm. Okay. Am I doing good at this role-playing thing? <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> You're doing great. Um, I'm going to say roll two D6s because this is not one of your skill sets. Okay. It's going to be a high DC, which is a high number that you would have to hit with those combined dice in order to succeed because this is a difficult task. 11. <gasps> wow. I had set it in my head at 11. There is like lightning flashing in the house for some reason, like flashes of glowing lights and all of you, all of your your strange amalgamated body rips apart. Yo! And our own bodies? Yes. Our own bodies. Everything's coming up, Robbie. Now, are they all back in their correct bodies, or did they just yeah. triple Freaky we, Friday? Everybody's yeah. back in their correct body. Oh. Mothman, we've been through a lot together, and I know you've been going through a rough time. But in these past 10 minutes, you've been a real son of a bitch. And I don't have a problem using any method possible to get you out of our house at this point. <laughs> Let's write that screenplay. And when you see how great it is, you will want to spread your wings literally and metaphorically and go out into the world and leave the nest that is this shitty, shitty house. Mothman has like curled up to you and kind of like rested his head all the way down on your shoulder and goes, will you still maybe introduce me to Drew Barrymore? Absolutely. <laughs> I've already texted her. I'm waiting for a text back. 
Let's write a screenplay. The best damn screenplay any moth has ever written. Three hours later. We have an original Broadway musical that's four acts. That's part one and part two that are each four and a half hours long. And Jesus. at the at the intermission in each of them, they go, okay, well, come back for part two. And you think it's over, but it's not. And you have to come back the next night. Um, Bigfoot is played by Keanu Reeves, who also later plays Nessie. Um, <laughs> the second act is just a Ray Bradbury novel. And uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda <laughs> has crafted all of the music for it. Uh, but the chorus is backed up by Beethoven Mom. There is a real life tragedy in which Vanilla Ice, who is a stunt double for Keanu, uh, is actually killed. Um, and during no, that. No, no, no. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, he's the stunt double for Pedro Pascal. Oh, he's the stunt double for Pedro Pascal, uh, in which yeah. Vanilla Ice is killed, um, fortunately saving our dear sweet Pedro. Um, <laughs> Yeah, during a dangerous stunt uh, that leads us to a 167-year time jump telling the story <laughs> from the perspective of Nessie. Then Drew Barrymore oh. as the shoulder kitten. and the, It's sort of like our baby Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, you know, sitting at an old-school typewriter out in the shed. The last word, the, the end is typed at the end of the script. And everybody sits back to take a moment and realize it's literally been weeks that you've been hunched over this typewriter together. But you've built something truly beautiful together. And oh, uh, look at this. I just got a text from Drew Barrymore. She wants us to, to meet at her office That's to great. pitch to a bunch of execs. I have the power to say that this is happening because it's look at this phone. <laughs> look I at my razor. It says and it. It. Yeah, your Razor phone does say a text from Drew Barrymore has come in and she wants you to meet the office. Please now proceed to pitch uh, this movie collaboratively to Drew Barrymore. <laughs> All right, I'm still actively very mad at my One thing I can't deny, that is the genius of this writer. I have been collaborating on this project fairly recently, but from what I have seen, this is going to have the financial success of Star Wars with the musical accessibility of Frozen, the family friendliness of Soul, and the deeper message of Wally. -E. You got it all sort of rolled in there. We got Broadway musical. We already have Keanu Reeves signed on. We're gonna kill Vanilla Ice for funsies. Um, kill Vanilla we, Ice. Ray Bradbury has graciously decided to give us his anti-technology message of the Velt for Act Two. From the grave. From the grave. Uh, it's gonna be a two night, nine hour spectacular. That's really cool. May I introduce you to the mental juggernaut behind the story originally, who is currently very actively single. Mothman. That's right, he's real. <laughs> and he kind of like steps out from somehow was like in the shadows behind you, even though he towers about two and a half feet over most of you. Uh... As he's doing that, can I open the window just slightly so the sun hits him just like, mm. He, he truly glows and you know that you've gotten to him. You've gotten him to his best place and put him in his best form for this. And Drew Barrymore goes, wow. Mothman asks um, you, Robbie, if you could just, could we just step outside for just a, a second? I just, I just need a minute. I'm so sorry. What's up, Mothman? What the hell? What the, what could it possibly be now? Mothman gazes deep into your eyes, Robbie. <laughs> and he lowers himself at the knees, just to get like right to your eye level. And he goes, look, I know I was really excited to meet Drew Barrymore and she's, yeah, uh, she's wonderful. And I hope that this, I hope that this movie is a great success, but I don't feel right taking this great success in life without you, Robbie. Will you please, will you please be m my moth ma'am? <laughs> There's a big glass window, and we're all just witnessing the <laughs> two-way mirror. A hundred percent. And Mothman gets down on one knee in front of you and uh, pulls out a little box, and he has taken that metal that he found in the scrapyard, and he has bent it into oh a little God. junk oh, ring. I'm sweet. Mothman, I, I, I don't know. I have been hurt before, almost a hundred percent by Is you. Is that tungsten? How can I... How can I know that won't happen again? Because when I love, I love all the way. You have showed me the best version of myself and the best angles of yeah. myself. Yeah. And I will never, ever hurt you. 
Aw, heck. Come here, you big lug. He takes the he takes the little twisted ring out, and he he puts it up for your hand and, and slides it onto your finger. How did you know I had a seven and a half ring so <laughs> That's uh, it's perfect. Don't ask. Don't. Okay. And then he turns to you and takes both of your hands, Robbie, and looks over to Drew Barrymore and says, "We're ready to go to Hollywood." Uh, and. The entire uh, household is whisked away to Hollywood and put up in an incredible mansion uh, while they are filming this lovely story. And you have successfully gotten Mothman off of your couch and into your hearts. Yeah. <laughs> also, Bitcoin's up. So, <laughs> so next, you know, next campaign, get Kyle out. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Sage, again for for being our wonderful GM. Thank you guys again. This was uh, this was a journey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, y'all.